Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the Grey, good morning. I welcome you all to our Remembrance Day service of 2020. This year, our service is somewhat different. Because of COVID, we have unfortunately been limited in who we could invite today. Nevertheless, the significance of today is as relevant, if not more so, than ever before. I am pleased, however, still to be able to welcome representatives from various units from our, and also from our allied organisations who will be laying wreaths today. We will now begin, before we are seated, with the hymn, O Valiant Hearts, that will be sung as a solo by Yongama and Kuwizi. Comfort. Where peoples are slow pressed, 
bring liberation. Where communities are still victimized, bring justice. Where children are still brutalized, bring compassion. Where lives are still crushed, bring hope. Where evil is perpetrated, bring repentance. Where war still devastates, bring peace. May the lives of those that we honor today not have been in vain. May they inspire us to dedicate our lives to the cause of peace. Help us now in silence to realize the unseen world around us, too often forgotten in the rush of life. May we dedicate our lives to the ideals for which they died, that wars may cease, old hatreds be forgotten, and the brotherhood of mankind replace the feuds of nations, and so enable us to be worthy of all of those whose names live forevermore in our proud remembrance. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verses 1 to 15. Let us now sing the praises of famous men, our ancestors in their generations. The Lord apportioned to them great glory, his majesty from the beginning. There were those who ruled in their kingdoms and made a name for themselves by their valor. Those who gave counsel because they were intelligent. Those who spoke prophetic oracles. Those who led the people by their counsel and by the knowledge of the people's law. They were wise in their words and instruction. Those who composed musical tunes or put verses in writing. Rich men endowed with resources, living peacefully in their homes. All these were honored in their generations and were the pride of their times. Some of them have left behind a name so that others declare their praise. But others, but of others, there is no memory. They have perished as though they had never existed. They have become as though they had never been born. They and their children after them. But these also were godly men, whose righteous deeds have not been forgotten. Their wealth will remain with their descendants, and their inheritance with their children's children. Their descendants stand by the covenants of their children also for their sake. Their offspring will continue forever, and their glory will never be blotted out. Their bodies are buried in peace, but their name lives on generation after generation. The assembly declares their wisdom, and the congregation proclaims their prayers. Amen. A poem by John McRae. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that marks our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you, from fading hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. We are gathered today to pay tribute and to remember the nearly 200 old greys and all others who sacrificed their lives in the service of their country. Throughout the world, people have gathered to recognize those who died in the service for their country and to recognize that peace is always our ultimate goal. Shakespeare wrote, the more we sweat in peace, the less we bleed in war. So let us never forget these names here before us today. Each of these names represents a life, a life that was cut short in its prime, a life deprived of opportunities of reaching fulfillment so that we can live and enjoy the freedoms 
and the safety that we have today. Remembrance Day serves as a focal point for us as a school and as a community to stop, to take stock of ourselves and to remember others and remember what others have sacrificed. We cannot bring the dead back to life, but we can bring their memory back to life so that they are not forgotten. We can undertake in our own lives to do what they were prevented from doing in theirs. It was Eleanor Roosevelt who used a very pertinent prayer in her wartime speeches when she prayed the following. Lord, help me to remember that out there a man died for me today. As long as there is war, I must ask myself, am I worth dying for? A little while later, Elizabeth Elliot wrote the following. There is nothing worth living for unless it is worth dying for. The old greys and the millions of others who died believed that we were worth dying for. And if we are worth dying for, if we are worth that ultimate sacrifice of life itself, then surely we must show ourselves worthy by not forgetting the living as well. We must find ways to uplift and help others and ensure that we act as agents of reconciliation and peace so that young men will no longer need to sacrifice their lives. Let us remember the fallen. Let us care for the living and work for peace. And if this necessitates having a good, honest look at our own lives, may the Lord give us the strength and the grace and the honesty to do so and to face that challenge. And so, as long as, so, as we say, along with thousands of other old soldiers at this time of the year, they went with the songs to battle, they were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you. 
Please be seated.